Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our 2D platformer tutorial here in Unity, where today we're going to take a look at adding sounds to the game. We're going to add some various different things to make the game feel a little bit better, make it feel a bit more alive and a bit more active. Um, but before we start on the sound, we're going to do one tiny little thing that uh, I think needs to be fixed up, that's been pointed out to me by a couple of people. Um, and it was something that I was going to get to, and now seems like the perfect time. So, what we what we've got at the moment happening is a little bit of a problem. Say you are a little ninja star here, and if we throw a few extra guys, they're just going to fly off into the distance, and because they're not hitting anything, they're just going to keep disappearing forever and ever, and they're just going to be stuck in our memory. And as we learned before when we were doing our particle system, we want to try and keep the memory nice and tidy by deleting things that we don't need anymore. Um, so what we want to do is write a tiny little script that's going to destroy these ninja stars over time. Um, and it's pretty simple. All, all we're going to do is create a C-sharp script and we just call it destroy object uh, over time. Because this won't just be used, we, we could just add a little bit of code to the ninja stars, but we're going to make this a separate script because we want to make it reusable for, for say example, if if you destroyed an enemy and instead of just giving the player points, maybe you wanted him to drop some items on the ground so you could instantiate a little pickup item, um, but you want that item to disappear after a certain amount of time, you would be able to attach this script to it and it would get rid of it. So very simply, it's just going to be, we'll create a public, oh no, a public float, uh, we'll call it lifetime, and then in our update loose, update loop even we'll just say lifetime minus equals time dot delta time so as we've done many times before that will just make the lifetime countdown and then when lifetime or not sorry not when lifetime if lifetime if lifetime is less than zero then inside of our little curly brackets we'll say destroy game object we have semicolons, we'll save this, do the old convert thing like we have to do every now and again. And um, we'll go to our ninja star. We'll scroll down, once it's finished compiling down here in the corner, we'll click add component and we'll say destroy object over time. Now if we scroll in here, we'll see we have a little bit of lifetime. We'll say, say two seconds will probably be enough time for the ninja star to go off screen. Because we don't really want it to be doing damage to our enemies once it leaves the screen. For example, we could actually make a script that would just destroy the object as it leaves the screen, leaves the screen, <laughs> as it leaves the screen, much like we did with our um, our particle effect. We'd had void on became visible, destroy game magic. We could do the same with our ninja stars, but I don't, I, I, I don't mind being able to kill some enemies off screen if they happen to get in the way. Uh, so if we throw this, one, two, Oh, no, well, that doesn't do anything because we didn't apply the changes with our ninja star. So we apply those changes, and now we'll hit play. And this time... We'll, oh, oh, what's going on here? Oh, I'm silly. I said if lifetime is greater than zero. If lifetime is less than zero. Oh, that's a silly thing to do, isn't it? So we'll just wait for this to compile down here. We hit play, and then throw a few of them, bam, 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 and they should all start disappearing. Perfect, they're all gone from our hierarchy, and we don't have to worry about them anymore. So there you go, that's a very simple little fix for that. Uh, so now we're going to move on to adding some sounds to the game. Um, and first we're going to take a look at a simple little tool for making the sounds that you want to play in your game. Uh, it's a free thing to use, uh, it's called BFXR. Um, where you can get it is if you head the BFXR net I have it open here uh, basically there's two ways you can do it you can either download the file uh, you can download it here on the link down here uh, and run it on your computer or you can run it from within the browser here either um, me personally I I have it downloaded I like to use it downloaded offline uh, and all this does is um, I'll just go off for this so basically yeah you can just download it and wherever you download it you can open it from there uh, so I have it here so I can just uh, I don't really do it no uh, I can just double click on this bfxr.exe and once it starts running here we go 
So basically, it's a handy little thing that just generates random sounds in different kind of areas. So say this pick up coin thing. Every time you click it, it gives you a slightly different version to try out. And for example, say if you kind of like the sound of this one, and you want to try it, make it a little bit different, you can go mutation. And it'll give you different versions. And it, every time you click on, so if you want to get different versions of the same one, you have to go back. So basically that's how you can like fiddle around and get different kind of sound effects. So what we are going to need, whoop, we're just going to delete all these here. Um, what we're going to need for our thing is a few, few different sound effects. So we're going to need a pickup, a, a coin sound effects for when we pick up our coins. So that sounds like a good one. So we'll just delete these other thing. I'm just going to rename this uh, coin. And uh, what else do we need? We need for when our player dies, we want he explodes. So let's go for an explosion sound. Uh, and that last one sounds good. Uh, so we'll just call this one death. And we'll use the same thing for when the enemy dies as well, I suppose. Uh, so we need a sound for when we throw our ninja stars. So let's use something like this. Hmm, none of these are... Ah, oh, that last one. Okay, that last one sounds... Relatively okay. So we call this... Uh, ninja... Ninja Star... Throw... Uh, what else will we need? Oh, okay, so when the Ninja Stars impacts against something, we'll need a little sound effect. So... So this little sound here, so we'll say ninja star impact. Uh, I kind of like this sound effect for when the enemies get hurt. Enemy hurt. Uh, and we want the player hurt. And that one will do. So this will be our player hurt. Perfect. Okay, so what we'll do now is We'll go into our thing here. We'll create a new folder uh, here. Create folder, and we'll just call this one audio. So now that's, now that's created. We'll go back to BFXR, and what you have to do is highlight each one. So we go to our coin. We go export wave, uh, and that's a different folder. So we we'll go to our assets. Go. You have to navigate to where your files are, basically and go into your audio folder that you just made and just save that there. So the same for our debt one, we'll export that. It'll go back to the same place, save that. We'll export that, save that. And probably, oh, we could have exported all of them, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll just continue doing them all here. Um, export the Ninja Star Impact, and finally the player heart. Hit save. Okay, so now we'll come back into Unity here. And if we go into our audio folder, there's all our audios there. But every audio file that gets brought into Unity is automatically, uh, if we click on it here, it's automatically, so you can see it's a 3D sound. And basically a 3D sound means that like, say if you if you put the object here, or say, say we'll just imagine that this uh, ninja star is where the sound goes. Uh, basically, the further the player away is from the sound, the quieter it'll be. And if you go beyond a certain range, you won't be able to hear the sound at all. Uh, which isn't really what we kind of want for our 2D platformer game. So we're going to make all these sounds into 2D sounds. So we just untick that. And unfortunately, you can't highlight them all and do it. You have to do it individually one by one. So we just go through, untick each one, hit apply. So to make them all 2D sounds so that no matter where they are on the screen, we'll be able to hear them making noises equally loud um, which is perfect okay so now now we need to learn about how how do these audio sounds work in unity there's basically there's kind of there's two main ways you can have them automatically play when they're attached to an object or you can have them attached and be quiet and then they play them from a script so first we'll look at how to make them automatically play uh, so 
Winner Ninja Star. Every time he's thrown, he's going to want to make a noise straight away, which is the sound of him being launched or thrown. Or for example, if you're shooting a gun, this, you could have your bullet and it would be uh, making the bullet shooting sound effect. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get our Ninja Star throw. We'll, uh, actually, no, hold on, sorry. Ninja Star, just drag down here so we have a little space here. Grab our Ninja Star throw, put it into the space here and let it go. And you can see it says play on awake. That means as soon as it appears in the game, it'll start playing. Uh, so we'll hit apply and make sure that that changes for all of them. So we hit play. And there we go. That little sound was that ninja star. So, so now every time we troll ninja star, perfect. It makes a little noise and we're all happy. Uh, but once... That's only one little sound. What about when, for example, the ninja star impacts with the wall? We want to make another little sound. So a very simple way to do that is we have the ninja star already. It creates a little particle effect when it hits a wall. So quite simply, we can just go to our particle effect, the ninja star impact. Uh, and we just scroll down here again, just so we have the little space. And then making sure that we don't click off this. If we click on the art one here, or sorry, not art, audio here. Uh, we drag our ninja star impact down to the, ooh, down to there there we go perfect again we'll stick with stay on awake so now we hit play and once it all compiles once more we run over here and play there we go makes a little noise and we're all happy uh we've been run away doing some damage and then he's dead uh, but he's not making any sounds when he's dead so we could do the exact same thing again, and we'll add a death sound to that, to that effect. But he's not making any, we kind of want him to make a different noise when the enemy gets hurt. Because else it just feels like he's hitting a wall or something like that. So if we go back here, um, although I just noticed something there actually, it, was, it looked like it was hitting very early in relation to the enemy. So, I think do we have in our project settings hmm oh I don't know uh, we'll, we'll we'll come back to that for now we want to stick with dealing with our audio we don't want to get too sidetracked so so I won't I won't start investigating other things just yet um so uh what was it yeah we could add our desk we want to make him make some sounds when he gets hurt so we could figure out some way to like create an impact effect for specifically when you hit your enemy or something like that but rather than doing all that what we'll do is uh, we'll look at how the enemy is being hurt so in our script we we'll go to our ninja star ninja star controller and we'll open that up uh, and also we'll open our enemy health manager because i know that's what we're actually going to be using <laughs> so we'll pop into unity here or not unity sorry mono develop so in our ninja star controller um what we 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 know is that when we detect that the other ta other is an enemy then is going to go to that enemy health manager and it'll use the give damage um function from that enemy enemy health manager so within that enemy health manager function uh we know that that's always attached to the enemy so why don't we use that knowledge that we have there so we'll go to our enemy here and uh, we'll just zoom in on him a bit uh, and we want to have him have a, a little heart sound effect on him so we'll go to our enemy heart here and we'll drag that we could continue dragging it down here but instead what we're going to try is just drop it straight on the enemy there and that does the exact same thing now we have a little audio source here so now but rather than having it play on awake so he just makes a little heart sound as soon as the game starts that's not what we want we'll turn that off and now um what we can do is in the script here in our, our give damage little function all we have to do is go audio dot play and what that does is it just plays whatever audio is attached to the um the game object that this script is on so if we save that and we go back into the game and we hit play once i finish the compiling down here in the corner it should um i'm gonna need to destroy that ninja star as well it keeps annoying me <laughs> but yes 
So now he makes a slightly different sound. So when you hit the wall, there we go. It makes a completely different sound when he hits the enemy, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want to happen. Um, we hit him a few times and he explodes into a not very exciting um, player death. So we'll actually, now that we're here, we'll go to our, our prefabs and we have our death particle thing. We'll click on that and we'll go back to our audio and we'll make the, the death effect go onto the, the particle system. And uh, we actually need to, we need to drag that down here. When you're working with the with the prefabs, you need to drag it down into the space at the bottom of the inspector, like that. So now, if we go here, we'll kill this guy. There we go. It makes a lovely little sound when he gets destroyed. And and now that we set it on the death effect, it'll do the exact same thing for the player. So the player makes a light, nice little sound when he gets killed too. And that's perfect. That's that works very well for what we want to happen here. Um, but of course we also want the player to make a little sound effect when he gets hurt. Uh, and again, it's a very, very simple thing to do. Uh, how is our player being hurt being handled? Well, that's in our, uh, our, our hurt player on contact script. So we'll open that up here. Uh, so now, we have when when the player is getting hurt, it does health manager dot hurt player, and it does a damage to give. Uh, so we could go to our health manager again, and we could attach a game object to that, and do the audio that play from within that function. But it'll be it, it might start ca start causing some issues for us because we have that as a as a static function, and from from within a static function, it makes it very awkward to kind of to call non-static objects because to make the object be able to be controlled or be added to from within unity we have to make it a non-static object and you can't act you can't just make a non-static object play from within a static function it's all very confusing and completely not something we need to look at at all so the very simple way to do it on our enemy on our enemy health manager we did audio.play so that's how we know we can get the audio on an object to play and and here when we're hurting the player we already know that the other here is the player so if we were to attach a game, uh, an audio sound to the player for when he gets hurt we could do other dot audio dot play so then when the player uh, gets hurt by whatever's hurting the player uh, the enemy walking into him in, in this example uh, it will play that little sound effect. So of course we need to go to our player and we need to add that audio to him. So click on the player, go to our audio. Uh, we've got the player heart, drag that down to there. And now when we hit play and we walk over to our enemy. Oh, he hurt us. Ow, ow, ow. Oh no, we've been exploded. Um, so it makes it feel a little bit better. Of course, at the moment also, when he does that, that's that looks a bit weird. That's something we're going to have to look at in the next episode. The player, we need to establish a way for the player to get knocked back when the enemy touches off him. Because it also looks, he just gets stuck there, just having a little bit of a kiss. And that's not what we want. So the final little audio thing we're going to look at here is collecting coins. Now, again, we could create a, a little particle effect if we wanted to that gets created every time you pick up a coin and that plays a little sound effect and that would be a perfectly fine way of doing it but we want to take a look at doing it a different kind of way um, so we saw how to through a script play an audio object that's attached to uh, to the same object as the script and we saw how to play audio on another object that the script is encountering uh, but there's a, 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 a third way to do it, is to create a reference to a separate object altogether that the script can call from. So what we're going to do is, for each individual coin, we're going to um, we're going to make it play a certain sound effect. So we're going to go to our script for our coin pickup. So our coin pickup script here. Once it loads up, here in Mono Develop, here we go. So what we're going to do is create a, p 
public audio source. So basically, an audio source is just an object with an object, uh, an audio source attached to it, is what uh, it'll be looking for here. So it, uh, we create a public audio source and we'll call this uh, just coin sound effect. And much like with audio.play or, uh, or the other the audio.play that we used, uh, within our, um, our on trigger enter function here, before the object is destroyed, we'll just go coin sound effect dot play. Oh, we need a capital P on that, dot play. There we go. And you could have, the, the, the good thing about using this thing, you could have multiple different audio sources for any different effects for, if you want to have, I don't know, if you want to have different effects play randomly for each coin, for example, you could have like different ones here and then you could go if random range numbers whatever i don't know you could do you can do many different things but you can have multiple different sources anyway and then you can choose one to play specifically so you could have coin sound effect one coin sound effect two coin sound effect three or whatever you wanted and then within the function you could just play one specific one that you wanted to um but we're just looking at the basic way to do it here so coin sound effect dot play and that will play whatever effect we have assigned to be the coin sound effect. So we'll just save that and we'll pop back into the game. So now we need to decide what the count coin sound effect is. And for audio sources to work, you need them to be an object in the world. So what you could do is, um, you could create another object somewhere else that's, outside the coin um, or you could and all those objects reference to it um, something completely different you can call it just a coin sound effect but what I like to do is make use of the way that we have sorted things so for example in our coins here we've put them all into a, a coin object to keep things nice and tidy but also we should make use of this rather than just having to be an object that has been completely useless so what we're going to do is on our coin object we're going to drag our coin sound effect and we just pop that there so now on each of these coins here we have a, a blank audio source so we will just highlight all of them and very simply we can just drag the drab no um sorry we'll highlight all of them and we can just drag the top one the the coin holder uh, into our sound effect space and now when we hit play Oh, oh, sorry, that was a mistake by me. We don't want that sound to play. On our coin sound effect, we should make sure play on awake is turned off. And then when we hit play and go back in, there we go. Our coins get picked up. They make a nice little sound. We can chuck our little um, ninja stars, collect some coins, and die. And there you go. So that's the basics of how to add sound effects to your game hopefully you'll you'll find it useful and you can see there's lots of different ways of using the sound effects to different to different effects and to different um, benefits for the player and for uh for you as the designer of the game but yes thanks for watching everybody i will be back soon with more of the tutorial uh and next time I'm go I, we're going to take a look at that little knockback that we need from our enemies and we're also going to look at ways of hurting the enemies so we want to be able to fight back uh, apart from our little ninja stars. We want to have other ways to be able to attack them. So yes, I will be back very soon, and thank you all for watching the tutorial series so far.